tonight's second game for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers University. At the forwards, number 32, Lee Perry. Number 35, Tom Savage. At center, number 24, Anthony Duckett. And at the guards, number 23, Trey Carter. At the guards, number three, Bull Harvey. Number four, Michael Porter. At center, number 14, Marco Valley. At the fours, number 23, Matt Brust. Shelton Jones. And the coach of the Redmen, Lou Connorsecca. The officials. The officials working tonight's ball game. The referee is Tom Frame. He is in the center of your picture. David Day on the right, Nolan Fine on the left. This is a Big East assignment. This is the 15th meeting between these two teams. Each club has won seven. The first meeting was 1974, and the last meeting at the Meadowlands, St. John's won by 16. The Redmen have won the last three get-togethers, and they come in tonight as a heavy favorite. I remember those great matchups back in the 70s with uh, Phil the Thrill Sellers and the great St. John's teams in here. This place used to rock like a heavyweight championship fight. The Rutgers program is down, and we'll be talking about that throughout the evening, I'm sure. But uh, somehow in these neighborhood rivalries, funny things can happen. And both these teams are very vulnerable now to the unexpected. And for Rutgers, that would be a surprising win over a Big East team. And St. John's, uh, if they're looking at this as a, as a weak spot in their, uh, in their schedule, they could be had. Michael Porter, who many people feel should be shooting the ball more. He was five for seven against Pittsburgh, but he does have three-point range. And St. John's does need offense from their backcourt. Perhaps Porter is the guy to provide it. St. John's in the home, white with the red trim. Scarlet Knights in the visiting red with the white trim. And the opening tip controlled by St. John's. Boo Harvey and Michael Porter in the backcourt for St. John's. Both of these teams basically are half-court teams. I can't imagine either one uh, going to great lengths to try to up-tempo. St. John's lost the Big East opener at home to Villanova by seven, and then they lost Saturday night at Pittsburgh, 81 to 70, but it wasn't as close as that. Who Harvey's first shot of the game. Tipped around and controlled by Rutgers' Lee Perry. This is Craig Carter, a freshman, playing the point. Tough transition in college basketball. He has the tools, but that's a lot of responsibility for a freshman. Lee Perry, Darren Campbell, who comes off a good game against Penn State. Rutgers losing at Penn State by five on Sunday in a game they were really in till the very end. Lee Perry, he hits, and the Scarlet Knights are on the board first. Very obvious they are going to tempo the game, take plenty of time, get a good shot. St. John's is uh, between a rock and a hard place. They're a better team with more personnel. They've got to be careful not to be put to sleep in this half-court approach. Shelton Jones is held down the block. That's where he loves to get the basketball, but sometimes the Redmen look to him so often down there that it does become predictable. Well, I think early any team likes to try to establish an inside game. That makes everything else work a lot better. Drew Harvey out to Michael Porter. Rust pass, and they were looking for Jones. St. John's still with possession. Just underway, 2-0 Rutgers. 
Rutgers in a 2-3 zone now off the baseline out of bounds. Russ and a rebound to Perry. Michael Baldi threw that bounce pass, almost took Russ' head off. Greg Carter. Darren Campbell off the pick. Savage, he hits it. Tom Savage averaging nine points per game but shooting 28% from the field. He well, enrolled at Virginia Tech, and it didn't work out for him. And before he played any basketball last year, he transferred to Rutgers. So it's been a while since he's had real competition with that layout year. That's right, it's three full semesters. Baldy, pretty feed from Brooks. 1-3-1 one, one, half court trap. Run a second, trying to up the tempo just a little bit. Rutgers not going for it. Not putting up that quick shot. Campbell. And Bruss knocks it away. The 1-3-1 one, one will work when your wings cover like Matt Bruss does. Mr. Hustle. And he's got a scratch on the right side of his face. That happened in the Pittsburgh game. He doesn't uh, walk away from pushing and shoving. And contact. Foul call in St. John's. Followed by Marco Valley. Here's Bruss his pass, foul, just pass right through one, red jerseys. Five. Marco Baldi, with his hands up, as all good postmen should keep them, was ready to take that one. He's oh. been hitting the head with a few. Campbell misses, and here's Porter. Took it to the front court. Drew Harvey, who is shooting just 37% from the field, but leads St. John's in assists with 46. Rutgers in a man for man, but they're really packing it in. Challenging the Red Men to take it from outside. Rust to Boo Harvey. Harvey penetrates all the way, dishes it up, and in. And we're tied at four. A little finger roll from about two feet up. It looked like he was heading for the first row. Out of control. Got it up soft. Tough to throw up a finger roll from that low, right? <laughs> Darren Campbell feeds Carter, he penetrates, puts it up, foul call. And it's on Marco Baldi, and that is his second foul. And as we told you at the top, Terry Bross injured yesterday in practice. The last couple of minutes of practice, he went down with an ankle injury, and he is out indefinitely. So here comes Jason Williams, and you're going to see a lot of him from... Here on in, he has had a very good start to his first season at St. John's. Well, the Prop 48 casualty has just come on amazingly well. Uh, he's been a very pleasant surprise. That 13 points and eight rebounds on the road against a team as physical as Pitt tells you that uh, he is not shy around the glass. Craig Carter hits the first free throw. Carter from Bronx Science High School in New York. And he was a blue chip recruit. He was, averaged 31 points a game. That's a bunch. That was a whole month for me down in the Camden area. <laughs> of course, we would, we would have been a lot quicker, but we had to go out and take the ball out of the peach basket after every basket. Really slowed us uh, down. Oh, it wasn't through. that long ago, was it? Almost. 6-4, Rutgers lead, 16 and a half first half. Michael Porter shot, rebounded strongly by Savage, and the Knights push it. Savage got in trouble in the middle, but Boo Harvey is called for a reach, and the foul is on St. John's, the third team foul on the Red Men. Just a quick observation, St. John's is lethargic, and it appears to me that Rutgers has a very definite game plan. They're executing well. They weren't hurried against the trap. They're taking their time, getting good shots, and a, and a start, a good start for this young Rutgers team. Very important. Anthony Duckett, who leads the team in scoring and rebounding. Now we have a fresh 45 second clock and a timeout call. So 15.55 to go, first half of play. Rutgers leads it by a deuce. This young woman is about to repair her own car. As you watch, she's actually fixing one of the biggest problems facing today's engines, clogged fuel injectors. She's fixing it with Mobile Super Unleaded Gasoline. Its advanced detergent formula can unclog fuel injectors and give your car a new injection of power. Drive your engine clean with Mobile Super Unleaded. High octane with a plus.
earlier tonight at the Garden. It was Iona against FDU. Iona was leading by 18 points in the first half. FDU came back down two. Final play of the game. Jamie Latney gets the basket and a foul with no time remaining. Latney goes to the free throw line and watch what happens. He calmly sinks it, and FDU wins by one in incredible comeback, the final 76 to 75. Back to the live action, Rutgers leading St. John's by two. Strong move by Savage, rebound Shelton Jones. And a steal. St. John's again off to one of its patented lethargic starts. Jones with the rebound, loses the ball off his foot, and it's jammed home by Duckett. Little down court pressure now. Rutgers feeling it's out a little bit. Just a little soft pressure, backing up. Rutgers eight, St. John's four. 15 minutes plus first half of play. Rutgers really looks up. Jones to Brust. And a foul is called. Brust and Jones both fighting for the rebound. And it's on Rutgers, Anthony Duckett. Well, the Duck had a hand on that one. And Brust just out muscled him and brought that arm down over his shoulder. Rutgers will zone on the out of bounds. Lou Harvey to Matt Brust. Two for six thus far for the Redmen from the field. St. John's in a deliberate half-court offense. St. John's going to have to take a few from outside. That lane is covered with red jerseys. There's no place to go in there. Whoops. Brust and a whistle and a foul call. We had to get the ball and brust in there with a shoehorn. I mean, it's snug. St. John's has made only five three-point field goals this year. Five for 24, that's 21%. And until they begin, not necessarily three-point range, Bruce, but until they begin to put them up on the perimeter with, with some success, they're going to be looking at that packed-in zone. Porter, he hits. A 46-inch vertical leap, and he's still a pretty decent shooter. A lot of guys with great leaping ability like that are not good outside shooters. They put too much in the lift, feel they're expected to jump too high, and it makes their shot hard and flat. Craig Carter's pass intercepted by Brust. Here's Boo Harvey where he's most dangerous. He leads Porter, who is knocked down, and a, a solid play by Campbell. No call, Rutgers with the ball. I would say body checking would uh, fit that term pretty well, isn't it? Two minutes, send him to the penalty <laughs> box. <laughs> Carter hands to Tom Savage. And now Rutgers getting a little careless with the ball. Savage fall away, he hits it. 10-6 Rutgers. Rutgers leads 10-6. Soft down court pressure. Craig Littlepage talking with him before the game. Says he's going to show him a little man in lots of zone. Wanted to pack it in, but he's staying with what's been good to him. With a 10-6 lead, this is the good start this young Rutgers team needed if it's going to have a chance. It is a young Rutgers starting lineup. Two freshmen, two sophomores, and one center, Darren Campbell. Harvey, there's Jones inside. And they've got to take advantage of that, don't they, Bucky? Yeah, but Rutgers had pretty good weak side help that time. Tom Savage was over there where he should have been. Might well have drawn the charge. Shelton Jones been pretty consistent this year, averaging 18 per game. Long range jumper Savage, air ball. And St. John's will get the basketball. And the crowd responding with chance of air ball. It's really helpful when they do that because the player probably isn't aware. <laughs> it really helps the confidence. Yeah. St. John's down a bucket, 12.40 to go. First half of play from the guard. Other than the little 1-3-1 one, one half court trap, St. John's really hasn't tried to hurry Rutgers at all. Harvey to Porter. 
the San Jacinto backcourt come east. Looking at the ratings uh, in this morning's paper, San Jacinto number one again at 17-0 among the nation's junior colleges. Well, they got a, they just like a cookie cutter. They just keep coming out of there. You stay up on those JUCO ratings when you're uh, in airplanes all the time, right? That's <laughs> about the most exciting thing there is to do. I had a good one last night, LSU and Oklahoma. They ran a lot faster than this. Greg Carter. Fall away jumper by Duckett, taken away by Porter. St. John's running, Russ fills the lane and slams it for two. And we're tied at ten. St. John's patiently now, not exerting a lot of effort. Gradually sneaking up on Rutgers. Porter starting the play, now another steal. Jason Williams to Boo Harvey with Jones filling the lane. Boo pulls. Harvey has his own rebound. Penetrates, nice dish to Williams. And a fine defensive play by Carter. Now Porter. And a whistle, steps called. Oh, three second violation call before the shot. So we're tied at 10 with 11 and a half to go in the first half. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Mark Jackson of the New York Knicks. You're watching Madison Square Garden Network. We bring the garden home. On Coors Sports Forum, sports headliners speak from the heart. So let me play as long as I want to play. If I want to play the 50, so who do you want to say I can't play? Winning to me is second to breathing. Nothing has changed. I mean, they're still in a very chaotic situation there. Yeah, we'll find them in the uh, alleyways of life. I'm really annoyed about this whole situation because I'm just tired. You talking comeback. Join host Greg Gumbel on Coors Sports Forum Wednesday at 10.30 here on Madison Square Garden Network. Lots of snow in the New York area this weekend. Hey, Lou, how are you going to get to Pittsburgh for the game against the Panthers? Listen, I'm not worried about the snow. What I'm worried about is playing Pitt at Pitt in the pit. Well, it's not going to be easy, but we'll have highlights in the next Lou Karnaseka show, and you'll see it Friday at 9 and 11 p.m. and Saturday at 6.30. Bruce Beck, Bucky Waters, Madison Square Garden, tied at 10. First half of play, St. John with a good break. Jason Williams off the bench with a good reject. Porter with the ball in traffic. This is one of the few times St. John's had a convoy out there on the break. And Matty Bruss, St. John's version of Rambo, buries it. And a lot of people think St. John should be running more this year. Should take a look at the field goal shooting. But Bucky doesn't it begin with rebounding. And you've got to have a guy who can do it off the boards. As Harvey gets the steal and Boo lays it up and in. Well, he looked off the ball that time, took his eye off the basket and almost blew it. They're out there in pressure man for man, which is something St. John, now it's a 1-3-1 one, one half court trap on the make. But they are running off of steals and turnovers. They're not running well off the board. They're not getting, they're not getting their lanes filled. Harvey, uh, Harvey and Porter are running well, but unless Brust or Sheldon Jones can get out there and fill the lanes, there Not really isn't foul. much accomplished. An offensive foul on Emery Ward in the ball game for Rutgers. Number 12, the junior from Jersey City, New Jersey. St. John's with a two-point lead. 10.40 to go, first half of play. Well, St. John's is 0 for 88 so far and 0 for Big East dug themselves two 15-point deficits in the first two Big East games. At least they're out there with parity with 10.30 to go. It's a much better start than they've had this year. They've reeled off six straight points. Here's Jones on the baseline. Back to Harvey, and he's not even looking for the J. Redman reversed the ball to Porter, who drives and hits. And you're right, he gets way up there and fires at the apex. Well, first he was under control. He made the turn on his man, got to the baseline, Saw the white jersey and just went up, 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 over the top with a soft touch. Lee Perry dishes off to Craig Carter. I think if there's a, a concern about Porter shooting, it's range. But he's very tough down in there, 10, 12 feet. And another turnover with Jones igniting the break. Intercepted by Carter. 
And here come the Scarlet Knights. Lee Perry with the bounce pass. Savage. Still loose underneath. And after three or four attempts, a foul is called inside. And I believe they caught Emery Ward again over the top. They call him Rambo, but he's got to be able to harness that power and strength. Well, that's a shame for Rutgers. They were down there all over. It made a nice play. They're running well. You, you talk to the Rutgers people. Kids are practicing hard. They're playing hard. They just don't have the confidence to know how to win. That was a good example. They were down there doing the right things all over the iron, and it wouldn't go down. Jason Williams. He's not afraid to put it up from 12 feet. Back to Harvey. Set play call. Porter. Williams. And a foul is called as he tried to dish off to Matt Frust. Thank you. Boy, trying to front Frust down in there. That's very tough. Frust just doesn't know that uh, he isn't 6'8". He's your basic power guard. And when he posts up down in there, he needs business. Tough to front him. Quick feet. Jones with the slam off a pretty feed from Boo Harvey. And St. John's now 16 to 10, and they've rattled off 10 straight points. That's one of the reasons you play a 2-3 zone on the baseline, so they won't get that easy shot. Scarlet Knights caught napping. Campbell, he hits it. And Darren Campbell, Rutgers' best long-range shooter. Four-point deficit now for Rutgers. High school teammate of John Battle. He's done well in pro since leaving the Scataway. Oh, he's doing beautifully this year yeah. down in Atlanta. Yep. And for Mike Patello, another Jersey guy. They stick together. <laughs> Carter's pass, fall away Perry. Rebounded by Jones authoritatively. And here comes Porter in transition. His goggles steamed up on that one. He was up there. St. John's running the half-court offense with a little bit more tempo. If you catch where I'm going, Buck. I get your trip. <laughs> Shot clock now down to 20 seconds, which is about the time that St. John's teams think that it's mature enough to put it up. Williams, and it's taken away by Carter. Carter penetrates. Wheel move. And it's rebounded by Porter. Back the other way we go. Jones, watch out. Oh, give him a 9 3 5. A pretty over the back slam. And then Shelton Jones ends up on the floor. Oh, well, so much for showtime. 7 27 to go. First half. Timeout on the floor. So is Jones on the floor. But St. John's leads 5 6. The Dodge America plan on selected 87 Dodge cars and trucks clearly makes sense for the way America buys. You proved it. We've expanded it to include most every 87 car and truck in stock. 7.7% 48-month financing, plus $770 toward your down payment, plus our 770 protection plan. You get all three. The Dodge America plan. It makes sense for the way America buys. Now on selected 88s in stock, choose 77 financing or 770 cash at your Dodge dealer. Okay. On Amtrak's Metroliner service, you can spread out over breakfast. The Air Shuttle encourages closer working relationships. On Metroliner service, you can have a private conversation. The plane, however, offers conference calls. On Amtrak's Metroliner service, you can travel first class. On the Air Shuttle, everyone gets treated equally. All aboard, Amtrak. There's more Rangers hockey and sports forum on MSG Network. Follow New York Rangers game night at 7 p.m. The Rangers collide with the tough Detroit Red Wings. Then at 10.30, Woody Frank to Ford is Greg Gumbel's guest on sports forum. That's Wednesday on Madison Square Garden Network. Bucky, I think this deserves another look for more reasons than one. Well, Porter makes a beautiful feed. Sheldon Jones buries the shot. Just full of enthusiasm. One of the few breakaways. Watch this, the varsity trot. Whoops! <laughs> I haven't seen that move since the last Abbott and Costello film. What it was is there's two coats of paint on the end in Madison Square Garden and it tripped them up. 
Alender Lewis in the game for the Redmond of St. John's. You know, you try to look suave after yeah. the dunk. The trot's important. The shoulders have to be arced. But Rishnikov, he wasn't. 18 to 12, St. John's by six. In the game for Rutgers. Strong move inside by Duckett. And a foul is called. The Ducks all over that board. He just can't get it to go down. Coming off a career high of 24 just last week against St. Bonaventure. You can't fault his effort. He's doing the best he can for a 6'6 center. Steve Watson, number 31 in the game for the Scarlet Knights. Thought he was wearing number 20. And at the free throw line is Anthony Duckett, sophomore, Spingarn High School, Washington, D.C. He was a high school teammate of Sherman Douglas, who's now in Syracuse. That high school turned out a few. Elgin Baylor and Dave Bing, to name two that come to mind. And I was with Elgin Baylor down at the Pete Maravich funeral. He coached Pete in the pros at the at the Jazz. And uh, believe me, Bruce, that was a very emotional scene. There wasn't a dry eye in the place. A real tragedy. Duckett makes both free throws. Here's Williams in the paint, and he muscles it up and in, and that's where Jason Williams is dangerous as St. John's extends their lead to six. Man for man extended. St. John's kind of likes the feel of getting out on a couple of those breaks. Trying to extend their defense. Looks like Rutgers pretty well committed to keep St. John's in the half court as long as possible. Miles Dixon with the baseline dish to Anthony Duckett, rebounded by Ward, rejected by Jones. Michael Porter, as St. John's runs the break. Lewis, still loose, Frost is there. And both players come rambling to the floor, Anthony Duckett and Matt Frost. And I believe we're gonna have a hell ball, and if so, the arrow points in the direction of Rutgers. Matty Bruss wants to come down with something. He doesn't want to come down empty-handed. If it has ears on it, he still wants credit for a rebound. <laughs> Look at there. That's great hustle on the part of Duckett and Bruss. Yes, it is. They're going it. We said at the top that these would be hungry teams. Things are not going well for either of them in their leagues, and they're looking at this little respite now to get well against non-league competition. Rutgers has had three major injuries this year. Rich Datica, who averaged 11 points per game last year, 6'2 junior guard, stress fracture of the right foot. He's out for the season. He'll be a medical red shirt. Ed Zucker, after surgery this summer on his back, will miss the entire season. And Reggie Miller, a 6'4 sophomore, has a spinal condition. He's out for the year. Rebounded inside by the Scarlet Knights as they look to push it. Well, that was a good-looking break, though, by St. John's. They were under control, had good numbers, got a good shot. Good hustle by Lewis. That's two rebounds they picked up off the floor. Jason Williams just started the last break with a grounder. That should make Luke on a second half. He's an old baseball man. He hit 300 for St. John's. I just caught up to that recently. Lewis with the floater. Beautiful floater by Alander Lewis. Well, he was dynamite coming in in the finals of the ECAC Holiday Festival. St. John's in deep trouble without the spark he gave them off the bench in the second half. And he comes off that good game against Pitt, too, with nine points. Air ball thrown up by Savage. His second of the game, it was deflected according to Little Page, but not the officials. And St. John's gets it. He's not calling for the foul. He's saying it was partially blocked. Boo Harvey into the game for the Red Men, replacing Porter. So Boo Harvey and Alander Lewis in the backcourt for St. John's. Williams, Brust, and Jones up front. Rutgers in a zone. It looks like Orlando Lewis, based on that good performance, has worked his way into a solid three-guard rotation, which has to help St. John's. They desperately need this outside shooting. Here's Lewis. Lewis wants the J. He goes to Jones instead. Williams, foul call. Boy, don't you like the way Williams goes for the basket? He puts great pressure on the defense. Looking at that Oklahoma front court, it's very impressive with King and Grant, but they don't go to the basket. Last night, they only shot two free throws between them. 
and thus enabled the uh, LSU team to keep its front line on the court the whole night long. You've got to have big men to put pressure on, put fouls on the other team's front court personnel and get to their bench. Jason Williams missing the first free throw. Darren Campbell back in for Rutgers, replacing Emery Ward. So the Scarlet Knights now have Darren Campbell as a guard, along with Miles Dixon. Williams hits the second free throw. St. John's 23 to 14 after a sluggish start the first three or four minutes. This is play for Rutgers. This is not the usual man for man for St. John's. They're putting lots more pressure on. Normally they'll look at your patterns, but they're tired of the Scarlet Knights running the clock down. Carter is back in for Rutgers. Miles replacing Dixon. Miles Dixon. Each club has committed six turnovers thus far, but it seems as though Rutgers has gotten a bunch in the last five minutes. Nice fake. Rebound Harvey. Nobody there but Poo. Oh, St. John's fast break was one man in the middle and the other four all on one side of the floor. Not well organized. So Rutgers with the basketball, four minutes to go. First half of play, Scarlet Knights 3-8 and eight overall, 0-5 in the Atlantic 10, and having difficulty controlling the ball, and on the turnover, St. John's gets it back. Scoring only 14 points with four minutes to go. Craig Littlepage has to be concerned about offense. They started out taking the good shots, look good, two for two. Since then, it's been a long first half. Jones, beautiful laying off the dish from Boo Harvey. Boy, if you don't put pressure on him, he'll put that ball up there for the alley-oop all night long. That's the key to that play, pressure the ball. Basket and a foul underneath, Anthony Duckett posting up. And that's where Duckett's been most effective this year around the hoop. Followed by Matt Bruss. That's his second personal foul. St. John's a little lazy underneath. The duck actually turning and making his move toward the hoop before he caught the pass. St. John's not active in those passing lanes. I guarantee if Bowley was in there, he wouldn't have gone through without at least one major band-aid. Now Steve Sharita comes in, replacing Matt Brust for St. John's. And Anthony Duckett, a 6'6 center, who Little Page says has done a tremendous job in the pivot at 6'6, looking for the three-point play and doesn't get it. You know, he only started playing organized ball as a junior in high school, so he's really uh, quite phenomenal as a Division I 6'6 center. That's the word Little Page used, phenomenal. And it's hard to use that word when a guy's only averaging 11 per game, but considering he's 6'6 and blocking shots like that, not bad for a man in the pivot. And he altered that shot, held home as called, and St. Johns will keep it. So the Duck doing it on both ends of the court. Timeout, 3.21 to go, first half. St. John's with a commanding lead, 25 to 16. You're watching Madison Square Garden Network. TNF Outdoor Sports has skateboard fever, and it's hotter than ever. At TNF in Edison, you'll find only the biggest names in skateboards. Powell Peralta, Vision, or let TNF build you a sleek custom board from quality components. Check out the latest skateboard fashions, shoes, and protective gear. TNF has everything for high-performance skateboard action. TNF Outdoor Sports also has a wide selection of hunting and fishing gear. Visit TNF Outdoor Sports at 239 Plainfield Avenue, Edison today. Hi. This is Dick Craig, and I am your host with Not Just Rock and Roll. And I know that it's cold outside, but join us Monday and Wednesday at 4.30. That's on Channel 6. Friday at 9.30 on Channel 6. Unless you're in Elizabeth, that'll be on Channel 12, okay? And we're going to warm up with you. And, and what time is that in Elizabeth? Oh, I think it's 9 o'clock, but we're going to warm up with you. Just join us, okay? Not just rock and roll. We're going to have some fun and make you warm. Okay before losing to Michigan and then UCLA. James Bailey still playing professional basketball from that team. Of course, he was a freshman on that group. That's right. Foul call, offensive foul on Jason Williams. So congratulations to Phil Sellers who gave Rutgers fans so many great moments in his career. Henry Ward's gonna have to be a skin the rest of the year because he happens to be wearing number 12 
which is Phil Sellers' jersey, which is going to be retired. No, only kidding. They're going to let him finish the season with it. Then it will be retired. Huh? Three-point field goal by Steve Watson, who now has hit 10 on the year, the sophomore from Franklinville, New York, and that gets Rutgers back to six, so that three-point field goal really can change things in a hurry. Uh, coming out of that timeout, that was very important for the Scarlet Knights. Who Harvey. Kept alive by Williams, pulled down by Jones, who has nine rebounds and eight points on four for four shooting thus far. Steve Serena, a role player, will talk to Steve at halftime. It's a three-guard alignment now for St. John's. Very small team on the floor. With Jones and Williams inside, kind of three wrapped around two. Harvey is fouled. Somehow he got the shot up. Back in the game for Rutgers. Tom Savage. And also reporting in is Miles Dixon. So Savage and Dixon on the floor. Along with Steve Watson, Lee Perry, and the Duck, Anthony Duckett. You know, just watching Savage, he's trying very hard, too hard, with the pressure on him after only four games as a Scarlet Knight. But he, he does have a, a confident talented approach to the game. Uh, he, he may be forcing a little bit, trying to hurry things along, but it's obvious Greg Littlepage calls him our best player, and it's very obvious that he is. It's least something to build around. Maybe trying to do too much. Yeah, I'm sure he's feeling the pressure. Uh, this is not a good year. Now, I haven't had a good year for several years, and players read the papers, and they hear, and uh, he's probably trying to take too much of the load on himself. Watson outside the Savage. Rutgers trails by eight. Oh. And a beautiful move. Reverse land by Savage. And with a minute 54 to go in the first half, Rutgers cuts the lead back to six. That's what he used to do at Ewing High School when they won the Group 3 championship in Jersey. But he was heavily recruited. Greg Littlepage said he signed just after he took the Rutgers job. He got in that recruiting battle too late. Bucky, one of the few people who understands group one through four at New Jersey. Williams. That was all home room, Bruce. Rutgers right here, Bucky, can cut the lead to four, and they're right in the ball game. St. John's in a low. Good move by Watson with a floater that is good. I think you can trace the lulls to Matty Bruss not being in there. But something about his presence on the floor, it defies teammates not to hustle. 27-23, Rutgers down just four. Watson with five points off the bench, providing a spark. Williams trying to jam it. And let's see. Offensive foul on Jason Williams? Yes. He went up the lane top. Followed by Jason Williams. So Co Coach Littlepage can... Club is getting back in it. Well, coaches can live with that foul. That's Williams' second personal Craig foul. Littlepage says, hey, you know, we're getting closer. I'm um, the eternal optimist, and I really think that it's just a matter of time, but... Well, I'm sure over the last couple of years, the 73 Penn grad who's a business major has thought about other businesses. Coaching has not been kind to him here at Rutgers in long years. 16 and 41 in his first two. That's tough to endure. Watson missing the front end of a one and one. A big opportunity there for Rutgers to cut the gap further. Shot clock is off. 38 seconds left in the first half. 27-23. We expected these type of numbers from these two teams. Serena as St. John's weaves the ball. Bull Harvey's going to penetrate here and try to make something happen in a minute. Lewis to Serena. Back to Boo. Ten seconds in the half. Harvey. He hits on the baseline. Three seconds left in the half. And a steal by Serena. And he almost put it up at the buzzer. So the first half is complete at the Garden. And Craig Littlepage letting Tom Frame and company know that he was unhappy with a couple of calls. 
but it's still a ball game. Six-point lead, St. John. Greg Littlepage has to be encouraged. He's got a shot at the Big East power. He's within six points. His team came back off the deck. He's got a lot of good things to talk about at the half, Bruce. So we're at halftime at the Garden in this. Oh, more of a take charge player in a game such as this, or do you think that too much is being asked of him to be Walter Berry reincarnated? Well, if he's getting seven boards at the half, that's the right answer because it's packed in in there. It's a tough pass inside until St. John's creates some outside shooting and some room for him to operate. That's got to be his option. So seven boards at the half. He has taken the right course of action against a packed in defense and a smart move by Rutgers. Craig Carter with the basketball for the Knights. Down low, Anthony Duckett. Back to Carter from 18. And a strong rebound by Jones. Oh boy. It looks like he's come to play in the second half. Harvey, back outside to direct traffic. Jones very active down there. That's a good sign. He was four for four in the first half. He ought to want that ball. And a foul call. Porter getting off the pick. And he is hacked by Darren Campbell. And Michael Porter will go to the free throw line for two. Porter averaging 12 and a half points per game, Buck. Six rebounds. He has 38 assists, second on the team. 16 steals, second on the team. I mean, he does it all. This is the second person who was supposed to be at Virginia Tech. We talked earlier about Tom Savage, who transferred from Virginia Tech to Rutgers. And uh, the original destination for Michael Porter, both as a high school senior and then after San Jacinto, was to be Virginia Tech. So the metropolitan area is the beneficiary of two Hokies, who are pretty good players. Loose ball, knocked out of bounds. Rutgers will have it. Rutgers has lost 11 in a row at the Garden, although overall 32 and 27 at MSG. They've had some great ball games here over the years, as Bucky mentioned earlier. I love their matchups with St. John's during those golden years for Rutgers. And a pretty jumper made by Anthony Duckett. Bucky, probably the greatest game ever played here was between these two teams was the game be between Phil Sellers and Beaver Smith when late in the game, this was an ECAC qualifying contest for the NCAA tournament. Sellers made three in a row, isolated on the right side against the Beaver. A fellow named Marv Albert was working with me that day. Whatever happened to him? Is he getting enough work? I think he's some some city like Cleveland today. And we'll probably have to do a benefit for him. I, I worry about him. Russ with a pretty move, and it's 32-25 St. John's. Frankie Alasia was the brains of that outfit for St. John's. Those are great days. Knicks losing tonight, 119-111 in Cleveland. And the foul is called. Uh, Matt Frost, his third. The, the posture of this game now from Karnaseka's standpoint, he doesn't like the fact that they can't get away from Rutgers. I mean, it's no secret. St. John's is the better ball club. And the longer that St. John's allows them to hang around, the greater the chance that Lightning will strike. A good ball club comes out and puts them away right now. Campbell, long range bomb, and Savage almost grabbed it out of bounds to St. John's. The Red Men take on Seton Hall Saturday at home at Alumni Hall. That will be a very tough game for them, and then they are at Georgetown the following Wednesday. And after the Villanova win at Alumni Hall, the Big East teams can look in there and say, uh-huh, it is possible to do. St. John's has lost only twice in three seasons at Alumni Hall. Harvey misses. There's Brush. Look at him work the boards. And he is hacked by Lee Perry. Oh. What St. John's needs is a massive infusion of Brust all the time and Shelton Jones sporadically. But I'll say this, Shelton has played hard all night tonight. He just hasn't been able to operate with the defensive mindset of Rutgers. So Matty Brust will shoot two on the year Brust averaging just under 10 points per game, a 76% free throw shooter. And he has filled the role very nicely up front. The basic power guard. Big heart. That's for sure. Two free throws for Brust. Six points. St. John's by nine. Perry shot. 
tipped up. And Marco Baldi has the rebound, and Duckett is called for the foul, a frustration foul. Craig Littlepage up, though, encouraging. Wants his team on that offensive board. We'll live with a few of those fouls. Followed by Anthony Duckett. Boy, looking That's at Craig Littlepage's career, he has been exposed Anthony to Duckett. some great coaches. Starting with his high school coach, it was Paul Westhead. His freshman coach at Penn was Digger Phelps. Then he split time in the varsity with Dick Harder and, uh, and Chuck Daly. My goodness. He's been around a few good ones. And he was around Massimino at Villanova and Terry Holland at Virginia. Oh, assistant, yes, indeed. If a resume could run for a head coaching job, he'd Emory have it. Rambo back in the game. Emory Ward for Rutgers, replacing Duckett. Scarlet Knights trailing by nine points. Darren Campbell. Savage. Penetrates, and uh, Jones is, Jones fouled him, and Jones got hurt. I think he got hit in the Charlie horse. Got a Charlie horse in the thigh. The knee of Savage went into his thigh. Is it Charlie horse one or two shots, Chris? <laughs> I think it's one. <laughs> so Rutgers hasn't scored in a while. They are woefully lacking in confidence oh, offensively. That's and I think you could say that basically across the board. They, they work awfully hard, but it's not a confident team. Here's Lee Perry going glass for two Curry. points. Lee, the younger Good brother job. of Good Tim job. Perry, who Good plays seven. for the undefeated Temple Owls. Rust, foul call that he got position on Savage. He gets to play against his brother at least twice a year in the Atlantic 10. Lee, Lee Perry was made the all-freshman team last year. The nucleus is here. Talking to Ed Zucker before the game, he said he thinks for Rutgers to turn it around, they need a big man. He says Tom Savage is a fine player, but we need that big guy to really make a dent in the Atlantic 10. Jones knocked away by Savage, picked up by Jones. And Jones continues his backward slam dunking. He managed to make it coast to coast after the dunk without falling. That's right. <laughs> We're talking conditioning here. The 1-3-1 one, one half court trap. Did surprise Rutgers this time. Savage trying to shoot it before he caught it. Now his pass is deflected. Here's Boo Harvey, four on three. Boo penetrates and loses control. Keeps the ball, but he's out of bounds. Savage that time on the baseline committing a, an error of inexperience. He wasn't sure what he was going to do with it. And he got up in the air, which is not a place to make decisions. The worst thing that could have happened if he held it was a jump ball. Savage fires. Rebound for us. Porter. St. John's really backs it out when they don't have the uncontested layup. That's funny, the difference in philosophy, Bruce. Some teams come with their secondary break, keep the ball alive, rotate it quickly, look to isolate inside. Jones is hot as a pistol. Six for six for Shelton. Granted, many are in close, and two are reverse jams. But no matter. 38-27. Well, he hasn't been getting the ball a lot. In earlier days, Shelton would have probably drifted out and gone to sleep, but he continues to work hard, taking what he can get and being productive with it. Ward rejected by Shelton Jones. Good ball handling play. Harvey leads Brust. Look out. And Brust is fouled by Savage. You know, I think a lot of people cross their fingers and pray that nothing happens in those collisions. Well, ordinarily hanging on the rim. Here's the good block. Shelton Jones coming from the weak side. Ward makes the turn on Baldy. There's a rebound. Look at this. Between the legs. Yeah. Kick out Brust. And they're moving. Boo Harvey pushes it up and Brust isn't looking anywhere but at the rim. Ordinarily that is a technical foul. But because it was traffic under there and he got hit with his hand up on the rim, the officials let it pass, and Greg Littlepage uttered no challenge. He was basically trying to save his life. Yep. Watson in the game for Rutgers. It's kind of hard to imagine hanging up there 10 feet off the floor as a safe place, but in that situation, it was safer. Very good. Safer, and he was the safest. 
40 to 27. Big Jazz by 13. We'll be back. I know, you're one ahead of them. Hi everyone, I'm Greg Gumbel. Every week, Coca Cola. Excitement has already begun at Rydell Pontiac, and this year's Pontiacs are hotter than ever. Nobody has a better selection than Rydell. You want a great price, quality, and service? That's what Rydell delivers. Rydell Pontiac. They come clean. Rydell Pontiac. 27 Edison. Remember how great you felt when your car was new and beautiful? Boy, what a feeling. But how about now when your car is ugly? Better take a look at Mako's famous half-and-half -half car and get in right now on Mako's chain-wide half-price sale. You get a supreme paint job with new ultraviolet sunscreen coating for longer, better protection. Right, a better paint job at half the price. Here's how. The Mako Supreme Paint Job. Regularly $349.95, now only $175. Call these local Mako dealers for further details. Network. Shelton Jones, very productive this evening. This was a gimme. I think he, uh, he's kind of fallen in a rut. I mean, I, I'm anxious to see a little <laughs> yeah. bit different dunk. He does yeah, right. the same one all the time. Not a problem. 40 to 27. St. John's gradually easing out of this one. Rutgers needs a spurt right here. St. John's has backed off the pressure. It's normal St. John's half-court defense, which means they're looking at the patterns, and that one was perfectly executed. It's got to be Campbell or Watson putting up those outside shots. Campbell connects there, and the senior from McKinley High School in D.C. cuts the lead to 11 points. Campbell doesn't put it on the floor well, but boy, when he can square up with a no-bounce J, very impressive. Good-looking stroke. Russ dumps to Shelton Jones. He lays it up and in, and a foul call. So Jones with the extension, 7 for 7 from the field, 14 points. Again, Matty Brust in the lineup, St. John's Perks. Good pass inside. He blows right by three, four red jerseys and lays it up. And, and a little enthusiasm there. Somebody stole this pom-pom. Here comes from the opposite angle. He has to pull it down quick. Again, in traffic. <laughs> and trying to incite a riot. The guy's playing hard, and that's a tribute to him because he hasn't had a chance to handle it much tonight. 43-39. Fouls on Ward, his third. And this is Emory Ward. Watson to Ward, who penetrates. And a foul is called on Marco Baldi. And Marco has not been productive as of late. Ten minutes against Pittsburgh, no points, no rebounds. Tonight, just a field goal for two. And, of course, uh, his backup, Terry Bross, also with an injured ankle, makes Jason Williams all the more important to the St. John's team, either through injury or one of those funks that Marco Baldi now seems to be in. But if Shelton Jones can continue his consistency, now he's given lots of flashes of brilliance. But tonight, uh, in a game where, you know, the Garden crowd's not too, it's not too full, it's not a lot of excitement, there's not a lot of extraneous things to get your juices going. A senior might go to sleep on you, but he has been impressive. And he has been consistent throughout the season, which was the thing that they really didn't always get from him in his first three years. His intensity well, level has been real good all year. He's a senior. Matured. Draft time coming. 43-29. Yep. Could be an economic factor in there, too, Bruce. Sure. You want to prove yourself. Porter, well up in the air, and he'll go to the line for two. Bucky mentioned Terry Bross. We want to wish him our best. Terry, who was bothered by an ankle injury earlier this year. The left ankle hurts the right ankle and is out indefinitely. And he's a pretty good baseball prospect. Pitched over the year, over the past summer for the Mets 
Clark system. Now Savage is back in, replacing Darren Campbell. And St. John's is just opening it up gradually. Yeah, this is vintage St. John's. They just kind of go up and down, and they gradually, uh, you know, they nick you here, they nick you there, and you're bleeding to death, and you're not hemorrhaging. You're not aware. Porter connecting on the first. Michael Porter in the ball game now with seven points, and St. John's opens up the lead to 16. So this is just what the doctor ordered for the Redmen, who really had struggled and lost two. And a 2-3 zone for the Redmen. A new wrinkle. I haven't seen it this year. Of course, I haven't seen St. John's play very much, but it's been man for man in a 1-3-1 trap. Who Harvey pushes it up quickly. Baldy off to Brust. Porter. Baldy moving without the ball, and look what happens. He gets the field goal. Yeah, and again, Matt Brust. Right in the middle of the defense with the ball. Didn't waste his dribble. Practically begged one of those two big men to duck in and get open. Baldy did, and he got it. And the Redmen have opened up an 18-point lead at the Garden. We'll be back. Mitsubishi. There are a lot of good deals this time of year, but the really choice deals are at your Mitsubishi Motors dealer. Choose the all-new Galant Sigma, V6 power, world-class luxury, and it lists for under 16.6. You might even do better. Or choose Priesus, over 60 standard features priced under 5,300. Toyota and Nissan can't beat that. So for a choice deal, look for this sign. Special factory to dealer incentives on other models could save you up to $1,000. Hurry! In 1959, Coors first put draft beer in bottles and cans. That same year, an Hispanic kid from Pacoima rocked the nation, and fans learned a new language from a young man named Richie. The skyrocket success of Richie Valens. The brewery fresh draft taste of Coors beer. You can copy the style, but there's only one original. St. John's has opened it up here in the second half. They lead by 18 points. Matty Bruss getting the ball at the high post, just waits patiently. Marco Baldi finally ducks in, steps in front, gets the easy hoop. Matt Bruss with three assists in the second half. And again, I go back to the point where you can take St. John's pulse by Matty Bruss' presence on the floor. Without him, they seem to lack a spark. And our statistician, Harry Robinson, informs me it is 18 to 18-6 in the second half, SJU. Pretty side jump by Lee Perry. Perry, who scores most of his points inside, has six. 16 points, 13 minutes. Rutgers now coming down the floor, trying to create something. They're going to force St. John's into a running game. Not a great pass by Brust, who was a tight end, not a quarterback in high school. Pretty good one, too. The Penn State's and the football schools wanted him, but he went to North Carolina on a basketball scholarship. Didn't go well there. Lou Karnasek, glad to welcome him home. He says he's asked 17 times a day if he ever misses football, and he says, no, I don't. That's hard to uh, tell that the way he plays hoops. Good pass, another good pass, and Jones is hacked. Might have taken a shuffle of Buffalo before, but he got away with it, and he'll go to the line for two. Two very nice feeds in a row by St. John. Guess who creates this? Russ did not go to meet the pass, but he sure went down there and got some skin under his fingernails, created a loose ball. Nice little shuffle pass to the side. Another pass. Shelton Jones, a little tap dance. Probably should have powered right up. Shelton Jones, shooting two. Savage, fourth foul. Good passing in close quarters that time by the Red Men. Maybe one pass too many. Duckett is in for Rutgers. Ward leaves. And Jones at the free throw strike. Two shots. Boy, after the circus at Pittsburgh on Saturday, this uh, atmosphere in here, which is not very enthusiastic, must seem like intramural to St. John's. Normally, the Big East arenas are cooking. Well, Pittsburgh at the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse 
which holds 6,800. They average 7,900, so you figure that one out. I think the fire marshal's on the take. That's what I think. <laughs> That's Jones' first miss of the night, either from the line or from the field. Either that or he's got a piece uh, of the uh, concession. Yeah. <laughs> Three-point attempt. Nope. Watson dished off instead. Nice pass by Steve Watson. Dumped it down, but nothing happened. And Watch the out. men are running. Watch Porter. What a jam! All the way from San Jack. They have done that one before. This one deserves another look. The it's little people put on an aerial show. The San Jack Express. Boo Harvey in the middle. He coughs it up soft, and Michael Porter, with a 46-inch vertical leap, puts it away. Can this guy jump or what? Somebody slid a trampoline out there while we weren't looking. Look at him go. Wow. Above the square. <laughs> Shades of Spud Webb. Spud Webb, of course, went to Midland Junior College in Texas. But this little guard pair of St. John's, very, very effective at San Jack. As we pointed out earlier, San Jack right back on top of the National Junior College rating, 17-0, number one. But a technical foul was assessed. On Mr. Porter for hanging on the rim. And Watson hits the tee. Either well, that it was worth it, wasn't either it? Either that or it was a three-second violation because Michael Porter went up in the air and didn't come back down in three seconds. He put those hands in the air, you know, like a monster Jerome Lane type player, and he just bashed it through. Well, that put a little spark in this crowd. Back now on the 2-3. St. John's aggressive in the passing lanes out of the 2-3. Carter keeps it alive, penetrates. Out of bounds to St. John's. 50 to 32, 11.51 to go, second half. Bruce Beck, Bucky Waters with you from the guard. Greg Little Page inherited a 16-14 team from Tom Young with five seniors graduating. And Jones misses the aerial show. Jason Williams called for an offensive on the rebound. So Porter saw Jones get excited when he jammed. It tried to get him into the action, but uh, just didn't work that way. Jason Williams getting a lot of fouls in the sumo wrestling contest down around the basket. He's really trying to get to that offensive board, and that bodes well for St. John's. 50 to 32, St. John's in command. You're watching Madison Square Garden Network. Remember all the hit songs of the last four decades? Imagine getting fit to them. Now you can with this special TV offer. Pick up your phone and order Esquire's Dance Away. Get fit with the hits. Fitness is now fun with four great low-impact aerobic workout videotapes set to original chart-busting songs from four great decades of music, all recorded in hi-fi stereo. Each tape contains a total low-impact aerobic workout, including an invigorating warm-up and a relaxing cool-down. Call now to take advantage of this exclusive TV offer. Each half-hour workout features a different decade. Each is unique with a sampling of dance steps from each era, and they're all led by the nationally renowned fitness specialist, Molly Fox. Esquire's Dance Away. Get fit with the hits. Fitness has never been so much fun. Call 1-800-554-1700 and order any or all four Dance Away tapes. Order now for this special TV offer and pay just $14.95 a tape. $14.95 for a limited time only. Call 1-800-554-1700 now. This Thursday at 7, be with the Madison Square Garden Network for the award-winning Coca-Cola High School Sports Week. Then at 8, don't miss Team USA, Battle Team Canada. Bucky won't miss it. It's a big international hockey tune-up for the Calgary Olympics. That's all Thursday, starting at 7 on Madison Square Garden Network. 50 to 32, St. John's 11.32 to play. And St. John's in the second half has taken complete control. They have outscored Rutgers 21 to 9. Lee Perry's shot is deflected there, Shelton Jones. Here come the Redmen. Boo Harvey lays it up and in. You know what's interesting? St. John's has run better out of this 2-3 zone. 
The reason is that it's very bold now with this big pad. They're taking lots of chances in the passing lanes. They're creating turnovers, and they're in excellent shape to run. We talked about the, the balance on the break earlier. Here's Jones, and he goes up with the left Here's hand and lays Jones. it in. Decided it was wise to save his body and not try to get caught up with the reverse there. You're right, they're running well. It's a little easier to do when you have a double-digit lead. I think Porter and Harvey want to run, too. Savage blocked underneath. Rust, he'll get it. Oh, my God, he goes flying off the court, and he's back on. Let's see how well he shoots with a mouthful of scorer's table. Matt Brust left a divot in press row. Good ball movement. Savage trying the three-pointer. Lee Perry got the rebound, but he stepped on the end line. Matty Brust limping a little bit. And here's why. Matt Brust with a supreme effort. Good reject by Shelton Jones. You'd never know that St. John's was winning by 22. That's why when you play with that guy, you're embarrassed not to leave it out there. Alander Lewis is back in for St. John's, replacing Michael Porter. Full court zone press now by Rutgers. They shouldn't have to hurry St. John's. Great St. pass John's. by Brust to Shelton Jones. Jones. Brust is doing it all. Moving along in cruise control nicely, thank you. 20 points for Jones. Brust really giving it up tonight. And here's St. John's defense again. Boo Harvey, whose eyes light up in this type of tempo game. Jones do with the basket, and Jones' eyes light up too because he likes this, filling a lane and getting the deuce. Well, that's just uh, vintage fast break basketball now. St. John's is balancing the floor, running well. The doldrums are over. 58-32, St. John's. They are running the fast break to perfection. Listen to the heartbeat. I'm not easily impressed. Of America. I figure the new Beretta can't possibly drive as good as it looks. Well, it proved me wrong. Beretta's Tomb Sport suspension really handled the curves. It felt taut, yet smooth, and definitely sophisticated. Professionally, it's outstanding. Personally, I'm hooked. The heartbeat of America. Beretta. That's the day, Chevrolet. On Amtrak's Metroliner service, you can spread out over breakfast. The air shuttle encourages closer working relationships. On Metroliner service, you can have a private conversation. The plane, however, offers conference calls. On Amtrak's Metroliner service, you can travel first class. On the air shuttle, everyone gets treated equally. All aboard, Amtrak. It's the Shelton Jones Show here at the Garden. 10 for 11 from the field, 22 points. Russ, the consummate team player, takes it to the middle. Nice look away there, imitating point guard. And Sheldon Jones, and we have seen that before. At least now he's dunking him from the front. A little variation in the slam. Foul called Jason Williams on the reach in. St. John's has scored five straight fast break baskets. And this is the first time in a while that they're starting to, to run with, with rhyme and reason. Well, there are a couple of reasons for it. Bruce. Primarily, the Rutgers zone attack against a 2-3 leaves only one guard back. And they're forcing the turnovers. They're getting the steals in the passing lane. And they're running off the glass. And Rutgers just is out of balance to defend against St. John's, but it's a good risk. Normally, you're all right sending four against uh, the, to the board against the Redmen because they're not anxious to run. Loose ball. Sean Muto in there for the Redmen of St. John's. Out of bounds. And the Redmen will get it. You think St. John's should be running more in the Big East? Or as we mentioned earlier, you got to do the job on the boards, and sometimes that doesn't happen. Well, I, I haven't really uh, seen them that much. Bruce, that's a hard question okay. to answer. They're looking good running, but you're right. You've got to have the turnovers to do it. And the rebound. Yep. Foul call in the front court. Followed by Elena Lewis. Rutgers hasn't scored a bucket in over four and a half minutes. We talked about that secondary break. 
I think St. John's would be very effective with it if they would get up the floor and if they didn't have a number situation to keep the ball alive with the with uh, Porter and Harvey and possibly some flash post, a good semi-fast secondary break that Kansas and North Carolina and some of those teams run so well, I think it would help them. And a three-point field goal by Tom Savage to break the silent spell. Here's Muto helping out on the break to Jones. Jones through the hands of Brush and out of bounds, but a good look by Shelton Jump. Yeah, and he took his eyes off the ball. He points to Shelton, thanks him for the pass. He was looking to find the glass before he looked it into his hands. Down on the block, Anthony Duckett. Long jumper from Miles Dixon. And we have a foul call. And it's on Mr. Jones. Followed by Shelton Jones. His second person. Miles Dixon. High school teammate of Kenny Wilson and David Rivers at St. Anthony's High School in Jersey City, New Jersey. Another powerhouse this well, year under Bob Hurley. Got a little Louis is 62. 63 this month. Three this month. Can you believe it? Three. Like a, I want to defend him, you know what I mean? Because like a good wine, he just gets better. You know what he says? Uh, he says I'm proud of that. Well, he should be. Shows no signs of slowing down to you, does he? Yeah. Well, this one tonight for St. John's, a, a well-needed tonic after 0-2 in the Big East. They get a chance to get to their bench and run up and down a little bit, loosen up and get some numbers, and that'll take the pressure off. But that next one coming, D.J. Carlissimo, Seton Hall at home. And the last Italian general in there, Massimino, came away with a W. And that fact, I'm sure, will not be wasted on St. John's. Sean Muta puts it up. And the rebound comes down to Miles Dixon. Here's Dixon in the front court. Rutgers down by 21. And a three-point field goal by Darren Campbell. They only give him two. Little Page is screaming, give me three. Miles Dixon. Only two. Miles Dixon came out of that pack nicely with the dribble. He's been erratic and explosive throughout his career, but that time he looked good. Harvey getting a little confidence on his jumper, and Boo is up to 12 points in the game. It's 60 to 39 with 7.30 to play. Here's a three-point attempt, but Frost is there for the board. <laughs> he does it all. Scores a little, rebounds a little, passes a little. Leave some skin on the floor. You don't win in the Big East unless you have some people like Rust. Harvey penetrates. And a foul called. He was pushing off. Serena gets set to report it for St. John's. And for Rutgers, Craig Carter is back. That's his first personal foul. Steve Serena, number four. So Harvey will get a breather. He had a very good second half distributing the ball, running the attack, and scoring as well. Well, he sure doesn't show much emotion. No, he, he, he never does. He doesn't smile. He doesn't laugh. He, he just goes about the day and uh, thinks about basketball all the time. Last player like that was Sleepy Floyd for the Hoyas of Georgetown. Had the same countenance. This didn't seem to matter. Same face. Jason Williams doesn't look too excited on the bench right now for St. John's either. He would definitely get a D minus in posture. <laughs> but I guess you can afford to do that for the 21 point lead. Miles Dixon at the free throw line. And he misses. Last year he hurt the shoulder, missed seven games. This year he's only averaging three and a half per ball game. They were looking for more from him. Serena. Alander Lewis formed the backcourt for St. John's with Sean Muto. The freshman from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, up front with Jones and Brush. Sharina, and he sneaks in, and it might have dropped, but Sean Muto going to get called for the tee for hanging on the rim and also offensive interference. It's called the laid-back position. <laughs> I don't know, Marty, what do you want to do? I don't know, Marty, what do you want to do? Hey, smile. Who are you smile? If you don't smile now, pal, but a 21-point lead with what you got ahead of you in the Big East, it may be April before you smile. 
Tom Muto, very anxious to get to the board and do a couple of chin-ups. <laughs> He's been sitting there all night long. He wants some exercise. Darren Campbell hits the tee. Maybe it's the crew cut, Bruce, but he sure reminds me of Bill Weddington at the same point when he came to St. John's. Big 6'10 kid, runs the floor well, bangs. I think his hair's cropped just a little bit shorter. G.I. Joe. Jones with the rebound, and Jones has maintained his intensity through what has become a blowout, 60 to 40, and very under control. Lewis, foul call, blocking foul on Rutgers. See Watson, number 31. There's Watson back in the game for Rutgers, replacing Tom Savage, who has not shot it well tonight, has nine points in the game. Somewhere down the line, he's going to find the touch that made him such a dangerous high school player. Well, he had 15 against St. Bonaventure, but came out of high school with a big reputation. And it just didn't work for him at Virginia Tech. For whatever reason, he's back. You know what Little Faith says? He says, you know, in high school, he had things his own way, but now a 6'10 guy can block his shot, and a 5'10 guy can take a charge on him, so he's just going to learn to play the college game. Lewis hits both free throws, 62-40. Redmen a good free throw shooting team, 74% on the year, and that wins games in conference play. Karnasek has backed off the pressure from, the, uh, from that zone now. It's soft. Bruss with another board. Under six minutes, Matty Bruss, Shelton Jones still in the game. Sharina. Running the attack to Muto. Good move, but steps call. No basket. All right. That's all right. The freshman's trying. Look at Elder Statesman, Chelsea <laughs> Jones, coming along to encourage him. That's maturity. So Marco Baldi comes into the game, replacing Sean Muto. Muto will be back. This is the kind of a game he needs. He needs some minutes out there. It's a strange backcourt combination now. Of course, the score indicates you can take a few chances, but Sharina and Alander Lewis, not what you call a natural pair. Three-pointer off the mark by Campbell. And Alander Lewis comes down with the ball. Good feed to Matt Brust. Lewis under control that time. It was four on one. I'll tell you, St. Charles looks very good running. Obviously, uh, you know, with a blowout like this, it's, it's a little bit easier to look good, but they're not forcing the break. They're under control. And good unselfish. decisions. Yep. Yeah, good decisions being made. Campbell can stroke it. He had made 23 pointers coming into tonight's game. And it is now 64 to 43. Campbell has 10 points for Rutgers. First three pointer for him tonight. Baldy. St. John's has not gotten much from Marco this year. He's averaging six points per game. Hoping to get more, certainly. And we have a whistle as Savage comes back in. Here's the fast break you talked about, Buck. Lander Lewis, see that little stutter step at the end? He had his choice. He passed up Shelton Jones that time, who already has 22 points tonight, to feed Matty Brust, who's been doing the unpleasant parts of this game, like rebounding, passing, and eating lots of floor varnish to get him this big pad. Jason Williams replaces Shelton Jones. And Lander Lewis hits the first free throw. Well, he was so impressive in that ECAC Holiday Festival final coming off the bench. St. John's guards were horrendous. Would they have one or two field goals in like 30 minutes between them? And uh, without Orlando Lewis coming off with a big performance, they don't beat Kansas. And that was an ugly game. Five technicals, 50 some personal fouls. Just one of those games where nobody could get in a rhythm and you just survive them. And for St. John's, it was a W in their fourth straight festival championship. Baldy with a rejection and then a foul. A little smirk from Marco, who was very much at home when the Italian national team came over recently, and Marco joined them for a nice Italian meal at Dante's restaurant. Governor Mario Cuomo showed up. Marco uh, was very, very much in his glory. 
one on one. At the line, Fred Carter, one and one, and he hits the first. As we mentioned earlier, he's from Bronx Science High School, a school that has produced five Nobel Prize winners. But they couldn't shoot one and ones like our man Craig. Came into the game with 38 assists, 33 turnovers. That indicates inexperience and four cents. Nice pass by Bruss hey. to Serena. 68-45 St. John. We're talking about a second career as a drop back passer. Matty puts it on the money. Carter loses the ball to Sharina. Sharina goes all the way and it is rejected. And so is Sharina by Savage. So with very much a sportsmanship move, picks him up. Well, Tom Savage, who uh, just careless ball handling out front that time. Craig Carter doesn't get the handle. And Sharina should have passed that ball to Orlando Lewis, but he kept it in traffic. Very impressive from behind. Tom Savage, the transfer freshman. Would have been very easy to stand up there and uh, fake a shoelace uh, loose and wait for the ball to come back. Sportsman-like move, I should say. Air ball there by Lewis. Rebound Savage. 345 to go. St. John 68, Rutgers 45. And the hook shot by Mark Peterson. Peterson in the ball game, 6'9 senior, Oak Hill, West Virginia. And he gets the hoop. It'll go to the line for a three-point play. Fouls on Baldi. And that is all for Marco, who fouls out with four points. Five fouls. Celebrating his 20th birthday tonight, Kevin Fitzpatrick. Tom Nudo gets a chance to come back in, get, get some experience. Three minutes and 41 seconds. A 21 point pad for the Redmen. So let's set the lineups for you. Chris Whitman, number 42, is in there for Rutgers. As is number 25, Tom Everson. Peterson is number 50. And also out there is Savage and Steve Watson. For St. John's, they go with Sharina, Alander Lewis, Brust, Muto, and Williams. 3.35 to play. St. John's after losing two, leading in a blowout. Rutgers looking at their sixth straight loss in what has been a difficult season. But Little Page says, hey, we're improving and we're getting there. He wants people to be patient with him. I don't know. It's going to be tough. He's got to have a monster recruiting year this year. Sign no one in the early signing date in November. Feels like he'll get a couple of verbal commitments a little bit later this month. He badly needs them. Lewis! St. John's setting a record for jams tonight. St. John's exploding with 41 second half points. They led by six at the half. They lead by 22 now. Three minutes to play. Kevin Fitzpatrick coming in for St. John's, and he replaces Alander Lewis, and this is the coup de grace. Happy birthday, Kevin. 20th birthday for Kevin Fitzpatrick. 6'1", Junior, Jackson Heights, New York. Fans, fans are excited 20. for him. 20. I remember 20. <laughs> wow, it was a long time ago. He's a scorer. One score. Savage for three. Yes, you could tell that one. Good rotation. And a foul called away from the ball. Tom Savage is going to be a good one. And the foul is by Sean Muto. Richard. Sean Muto called for the foul, foul away from the ball. No, that couldn't be right. It has Mark to be in a Peterson. Rutgers player. It's on Peterson. And Jason Williams will go to the line for one and one. Jason Williams on the line. Looking at this Rutgers team, it's uh, what I'm what? there is an explanation. You know, Rick Datica out of there with the medical red shirt. Hopefully he'll be back next year. But Ed Zucker, uh, basketball's over for him. Very unusual back injury. Put those two in this Rutgers lineup would make a big difference. They need experience. And Reggie Miller, who was the prop 48 last year, will miss this season with a spinal condition. A lot of weird injuries over the past couple of years at Rutgers. Here's Fitzpatrick, crowd watching the shoot. Muto, hands to Fitzpatrick. Sharina, Russ posting up down low. Sharina really looks for a shot. 
Peterson with the rebound. Serena forced the shot. Like a demolition derby down there trying to get that one off. Peterson pretty deep. Yeah, Watch this. Yeah. And that's a foul on Peterson over the top. Oh, they call it a Fitzpatrick. That ensures the <laughs> name of the box score. I used to do that when I got a late ball game. <laughs> foul quick, you know you're going to be at least oh oh oh. Luke on a second he does not want his team to foul. Who wants out of here? The pasta order is in across town. They got to get out of here. 202 remaining. And at the line, Tom Everson, who's brother Chuck played for Rolly Massimino's Villanova Wildcats. He's got another brother, Steve, who plays for Lafayette. Boy, you know, looking at him, though, and the turnaround that Tom Grice has made for Villanova in his career in one year, you have to keep the faith with those big men. And he has a nice shooting touch. Grice with a big, big night against Syracuse. Eight 20 eight. points. Didn't four miss a shot. Yep. Unbelievable. Yep. He and gives Villanova a whole new dimension inside. And he, he wasn't Grice last year. He was green. Only averaged three a game. Now he's up around 15. You got to play him honest, and that opens up the perimeter. Ooh, Fitzpatrick almost hit it. There's Jason Williams with a nice uh, uh, jam. One-handed. Jason Williams. You know, he was not a physical player. He was more of a finesse player in high school. But in that Prop 48 sit-out year, he became just tough around the basket. He's a very physical inside player. Foul called and going to the line will be Chris Whitman. Let's check the out-of-town scoreboard and see what's going on tonight. Boston College smoked Seton Hall at the Boston Garden by 15. It's a surprise. FDU beating Iona earlier tonight. We told you that score. West Virginia, one of the class teams of the Atlantic 10 over NC Charlotte by 26. And that's the same uh, UNC Charlotte team coached by Jeff Mullins that took Kentucky right to the wire in Lexington, losing by four. Whitman getting the roll. One of the Rutgers wins was over Lafayette, who in turn beat Notre Dame. Is that not correct? That's right. And at the end of the year, someone will do an analogy yeah. of about 15 teams, and they will prove that Amherst is 46 points better than Kentucky. That's right. Just because of games like that and unusual upsets throughout the season. We called it the associative process in math when we were in grade school. Yeah. They got shots for that? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> A minute I hope they find a cure. We didn't have those in Collingswood, New Jersey. No, it, it's one of those basic things, Buck. A minute five to play. St. John's by 17. Here's Fitzpatrick still looking for that birthday jumper. Peterson chasing the ball. Good hustle. Tony Yard in the game for St. John's. The walk-on. And he is charged with an offensive foul. Well, we have the chance. <laughs> I want to thank Harry Robinson for his usual splendid job of statistics. Right, Tony, and also right. for the help of the silky smooth one, Paul Sullivan in our First control unit. Foul. Control room. Tony Yard out there shaking and baking. Almost applied terminal whiplash out there to that guy taking the charge. Peterson. And there's Yard with the board, and he is fouled. He's got a chance to go to the line for one and one. Louis Carnes second breathing a little bit easier, but he knows the Big E season awaits him. With his two top lieutenants, Brian Mahoney and Ron Rutledge. Alabalbo also on the bench for the Redmen. One of the defensive wizards for a lot of years. He's still teaching over there. Yard missing the free throw. Thirty seconds to play, and Tony Yard had a chance to really pick up a couple of points. He only has one in the year, but he missed the front end of the one and one. Twenty-eight seconds to play. St. John's. It's academic now. They lead by 17. The Redmen now three and zero oh at the Garden. This program authorized by Madison Square Garden Productions Incorporated. Solely for the entertainment of our audience, any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this event, including the imposition of a charge for viewing the program, 
Without the express written consent, the Madison Square Garden production incorporated is prohibited. Fitzpatrick draws the foul with eight seconds to play, and he's got a chance to get a couple of points. Obviously very popular with the St. John students. He worked hard for that one. So Kevin Fitzpatrick, junior from St. Francis Prep in Jackson Heights, New York, a chance to hit the points. This is the first. He's got no points in one game so far this year. This is keeping the crowd in it. Fitzpatrick lights up his birthday with a free throw. He's trying to keep a straight pace. It's nice to see a kid like that get a chance and produce. He practices hard every day, and then he gets his shot. Tony Yard to Jason Williams. He'll dunk it. It won't count. And the ball game is over. 73 to 55, the final. St. John's rolling. They are now nine and three. And Rutgers three and nine. And Luke Karnaseka looks for Craig Littlepage. Some nice words, I'm sure. St. John's led tonight by Shelton Jones with 22. Boo 